Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 8th Electron Devices and Storage State Circuits Online Seminar. Today, we are very honored to have Professor Xun Zhao Ying from Georgia University here. He is now a assistant professor at the College of Information Science and Electronic Engineering at Georgia University. He received his PhD degree in Computer Science and Engineering from the University of Notre Dame in 2019 and a bachelor degree in electronic engineering from Tsinghua University in 2013, respectively. His research interests include emerging circuits, architectural designs, and novel computing paradigms with both CMOS and emerging technologies. He has published more than 30 top journals and conferences, including Nature Electronics, IEEE, TCAD, TD, TVSI, TCAS, and uh, ID. He has received the best paper award, a nomination of ICCAD 2020, the Outstanding Research Assistant Award in the Department of, Department of CSC at the University of Notre Dame in 2017, and the Brown Medal of the Student Research Competition at the ICCAD 2016. So without further ado, let's welcome him for giving this seminar. Professor Yin, you can start along. Thank you, Ximin. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, it's my honor to give a talk on my research work so far here today and join the, <laughs> join the ADDS seminar. Um, my research topic today is about the cross layer is designed for the search in memory using the ferroelectric FET. I would like to first introduce the motivation and the challenges of our research work um, for our semiconductor industry here, and then, <coughs> and then I will propose. I will introduce our proposed uh, search in memory design using the cross layer design, namely the code design and code optimization approach, spanning from the device and circuits to the architecture and applications, um, focusing on the ferroelectric phase, such as emerging non-volatile memory transistors. So let's start from the motivations and the background. I would like to briefly give you the current trends of our semiconductor industry development. As you can see from this plot, <coughs> the dark blue line represents the number of transistors in the same space developing along with the technology node, while the light blue and the gray line represent the, the, the associated performance, performing, performance scaling and the power budget scaling. It can be seen that even though Moore's law has put in more and more number of transistors in the same space, chip space, the associated the performance scaling and the, the power budget, the thermal design power budgets have slowed down the exponential growth trend. And the moreover, the field, the Applicate the future applications and the system requirement have even raised the higher raised the bar even higher when considering the computational efficiency. Here I pick the Docker and the DoD application as an example, as you see in the picture. The industry and academia researchers have taken efforts to improve the computational efficiency of the underlying infrastructure hardware in order to achieve better uh, energy efficiency and uh, to, to fulfill the requirement of the electronic warfare, uh, warfare for the future. These efforts, these efforts have utilized <coughs> the emerging architectures and uh, either older or the modern technologies in order to achieve the better computational efficiencies and uh, including the efforts uh, such as the general purpose CPU and the GPU. And however, however, when considering the future requirement of the computational efficiency, which is around 0.3 fenderjoules per operation, the IC custom, the, 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 the IC, the customized IC domain is still in the future. In order to fulfill, to, to meet the requirement of the future application assistance, both the innovations at the technology level and the architectural level are demanded for our uh, in both the circuit device and the various uh, design layers. So at the technology level, we could see that a number of uh, efforts have been proposed and innovated um, 
in order to propose the new uh, new uh, the new devices and the new computing paradigms in order to replace the CMOS directly in our conventional digital machine. Take the SRC and the NRI benchmarking effort as, a, as an example. In the past decade of years, researcher have, researchers have taken efforts to propose new materials, structures, and switching mechanisms in order to find a better switch that can replace the CMOS and to surpass the CMOS in either the energy and efficiency or the performance in the context of the volume architectures. But the bad news from this picture is that almost, uh, uh, um, uh, most of the new devices that are proposed has not been found in terms of to directly replace and uh, to replace the CMOS in the context of digital machine. This picture shows the, the benchmarking result of the 32-bit adder in terms of energy per operation and the performance per operation. However, as the, during the exploration of the emerging devices, I have found that some devices have demonstrated their unique characteristic, which are very suitable for some alternative architectures or the computing paradigms, which is a little bit different from the Venuma architectures. These new devices, together with their unique characteristics, may catch the opportunities to build efficient circuits and architectures for some uh, for the today or for tomorrow's applications in the systems. So, what kind of new devices and the new architectures are needed for our uh, to, to accommodate the property of our future application systems? In the era of architectures and uh, the Internet of Things. The data, the amount of data has been exponentially growing, and the number of devices we deployed in around us have, have been exponentially grown. So, for the futures and for the today and the tomorrow's application systems, we require we demand that all the all the applications are data intensive, ubiquitous, and connected, while the systems are autonomous, intelligent, and cost effective. All these properties of the application assistance. Okay. No okay. need to hurry. Yeah. Okay. Just from this side. Okay. 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 That's thank you. For the unstable internet. So there is a popular trend on the re research vision as how how will we build our future architecture and the platforms. A very popular opinion that we will build the heterogeneous, uh, the various uh, application and the domain specific course on our platforms. There might be the neuromorphic cores that aim to target the cognitive algorithms or the computing tasks. And there will also be the computing in memory module that aim to address the memory war issues for the data intensive applications. There will also be other customized, uh, uh, customized AC cores which can, uh, which can construct the, the novel computing paradigms for some specific applications, such as the analog computing for the optimization problems. And also the CPU and the GPU-like computing cores can still find their utility for their string or the numerical processing applications. In order to achieve this architectural level and fully leverage the unique characteristic of the emerging devices, <clears throat> the importance of the vertically or the cross-layer integrated design approaches uh, spanning from the materials, devices, um, via the circuit architecture systems towards the application, uh, application and algorithms has been recognized by both the industry and the academia. For example, there has been a, a number of programs funded by NSF and DARPA in the United States in order to support this cross-layer integrated uh, research approach to build, uh, to build these uh, heterogeneous platforms. And my research work and my research goal have perfectly aligned with that research vision as, we as our work focuses on the emerging devices and build the, the co-design and the co-optimization strategies um, from the device towards the application in order to get the, the optimal energy efficiency and the performance of our underlying hardware systems. <clears throat> and one such case study is a computing in memory module, uh, which uh, is the focus on, on, my, on my talk here today. 
I will briefly uh, introduce a bit about the, the computing in memory module and the concepts, as well as the example circuits and the circuit and architecture design of the computing memory. So computing memory is a kind of solution not aimed to address the memory wall issues in the conventional volume architectures. The memory wall is a kind of a bottleneck that exists in the <coughs> Between, between the processing element and the memory element uh, in the volume architectures. From the picture, we could see the memory scaling compared with the processing performance scaling is relatively slow. Therefore, a large amount of uh, energy and performance degradation has been incurred during the data migration between the processor and the memory. For the separate computing and storage in the volume architecture, the data migration is a must do and incurs significant overhead, which is the so-called memory wall issues. And the researchers aim to address these memory wall issues by locating, by co-locating the processing element and the memory element together so that the distance for the data migration can be minimized. One such one category of the computing memory is called a coarse grand computing memory, including such as the processing in memory, and the 3D stack logic memory uh, designs. These circuit designs locate the processing elements besides the memory blocks so that the distance of the data migration, the data movement has been minimized. So the energy consumption and the performance, performance loss uh, associated with the data movement has been minimized. However, we still have to fetch the data out of the memory blocks in this category, uh, computing memory category. Therefore, the bandwidth of the memory blocks is still the limitation of the performance of our uh, of this computing memory circuit. Another fine, more fine-grained computing memory category is called uh, the fine-grained computing memory, um, which um, directly merges the, fun the computational functionality into the memory blocks. So that we just need to send the instructions into the memory blocks. It will automatically gives you the, out, the calculation output from, directly from the memory blocks. So in this case, um, our work focus on sending the search functionality into the, into the memory blocks so that we can do the search functionality across the memory in parallel without us fetching the, fetching, the, the, fetching the data out of the memory blocks one by one sequentially. And this kind of uh, computing memory blocks is called the uh, co content addressable memory uh, design. Content addressable memory is a very representative computing in memory um, uh, solutions. It's a variant called the uh, ternary content addressable memory it has been widely used in the data analytic type of uh, applications such as the exact search match, uh, exact search or the uh, nearest enable search uh, for some uh, machine learning models. And uh, let's take a look at the, the, the briefly concept of the introduction of the TCAM lookup table. It's in principle performs the bitwise XNOR operations between the search data and all the stored vectors in the memory blocks. And only when all the bits within one row have their XNOR output as one, then the TCAM blocks will send out the corresponding matching, the match, matching result as the, as the search output and, the, and then activate the following RAM address in order to get our final output. And due to this content addressing property, the TCAM or the CAM designs have been widely used in IP routers as well as some inference component in the machine learning type of um, um, neural, neural network architecture hardwares. And as you can see, if this left figure shows the 16T conventional CMOS based TCAM designs. It suffers from a relatively large area overhead and the insufficient energy and performance. Also the CMOS is suffer, uh, suffers from the high leakage. These challenges, uh, these challenges and the properties of the CMOS based TCAM have raised the opportunities for some emerging non volatile memories, such as the magnetic tunnel injection and the resistive RAM devices. These two, uh, for, for them, these two MTJ and the rerun uh, non volatile memories 
encode the logic one and the logic zero into the devices by programming different, uh, uh, by programming the devices into uh, different uh, resistance into the, for example, if we write the logic one, we just program the relatively low resistance. So in this case, we actually merge the, the, these two devices in the circuit are actually functioning as the variable resistors. Therefore, we can encode the logic into the device and uh, behave and, uh, and, and achieve the XNOR functionality into the device with, the, with some actual transistor the, uh, facilitation. However, <laughs> these two devices can achieve a more compact uh, TCAM design compared with the CMOS TCAM. However, their two terminal structure and their relatively low ion off ratio have have hindered them from building some much more compact and efficient TCAM designs, which I will elaborate later on. We need to find a more find a better device to construct a really compact, energy efficient, and a better performance uh, TCAM designs, and that comes with our work focusing on the ferroelectric FET. FET is a kind of a emerging non-volatile memory three terminal transistors. Here I briefly introduced the, the history of the FET as well as the FET based TCAM designs. The device has been firstly proposed uh, in 1950s. However, due to the technology, the technology limitation, it has not been developed developed until the 2008 while it has been fabricated in the Berkeley lab. Um, initially for the for for, ampli for for improving the sub threshold swing of the devices and that time is called a negative capacitance because the researchers aim uh, aim to improve the sub, -thre sub threshold swing of the devices by <laughs> by employing the negative capacitance effect of the ferroelectric layer during the usage of the negative capacitance effect um, they have found that there are always been there is always an hysteresis characteristic in the device in the device curves, and uh, they and since they don't want the hysteresis, they aim that they, they they are taking efforts to suppress the hysteresis in order to get well well at the same time maintaining the high, uh, maintaining the the good sub threshold swing of the devices. But when I when I found the hysteresis within the device. <laughs> I realized that it can be it can be a leverage for building some efficient computing in memory circuit. At that time, after the first uh, Fairfield based logic in memory circuit has been proposed, the research on the Fairfield has been divided into two directions. One direction is at the bottom layer, aim to improve the sub threshold swing of the devices in order to <coughs> directly replace the CMOS in some circuit and architectures. Well, another direction aim to leverage the hysteresis of the of the of the device to build some efficient novel computing uh, computing circuit and architectures, and that is called a Fairfield. And after we have uh, proposed uh, several TCAM uh, Fairfield based TCAM cells, uh, I will elaborate how we leverage the property the and the unique characteristic of Fairfield in building the efficient T uh, the TCAM designs the CAM designs using the co-design and co-optimization -optimal approach. <clears throat> the Fairfield device is relatively easy to build. We just need to add the ferroelectric material layer on top of the gate stack of the conventional MOSFET structure, <clears throat> as you can see in the, <clears throat> in the figure. The fabrication prototype of the Fairfield have been, have been demonstrated av available both from the academia and the industry. So since we have already had the experimental demonstrated device, the immediate question to, for us to build the efficient circuit is how could we capture the unique characteristic or more specifically the hysteresis of the Fairfield? From the experimental, uh, from the experiment um, device, we could see the ferroelectric layer on top of the Fairfield uh, gate stack Consists of uh, several fer ferroelectric domains, and each of the domains have their own has their own response to the electric electric field across them. 
Therefore, when we apply a voltage, namely an electric field across the ferroelectric layer, we can get a various responses. We can get independent responses from the ferroelectric domain. And by adding up all of these responses together using the pre-stack mode theory, we can finally ultimately get a pre-stack model that captures the behavior of the ferroelectric layer. And by combining the basin form model for the underlying MOSFET structure and the pre-stack model for the ferroelectric layer, we can finally get the multi-domain multi pre-stack model describing the ideal ferroelectric domains or the responses of the ferroelectric layer. Uh, layer. <clears throat> and this model has also been calibrated with uh, experimental results. And uh, the model has validated, has, has shown their, uh, has shown the historic uh, characteristic of the fairfield, as you can see from this figure. Here, by programming the device using the high right voltage, either the full volt or the negative full volt, we can program actually the logic zero and the logic one into the devices. When we want to read the, the, the value we store in the ferrofield, we just apply the VG equals to zero. Whether the current flowing, whether there is a current flowing through the device, it will be dependent on the stored value. And by, <coughs> by get metal work function engineering or the body biasing, um, we can actually shift the, shift the hysteresis curves towards the positive side of the VGS. In this case, we have changed the read voltage of the device from the zero to the one volt. Namely, we have the write voltage of four volt and the read voltage of one volt. One single transistor uh, non volatile memory is used in the Fairfax device. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So in this sense, I want to compare the Fairfield with other emerging normal. Since the MTG and rerun are two terminal structures, they require extra writing devices to facilitate their write and read operation. While the Fairfield is the three terminal structures, which naturally separate the write and read path, therefore eliminates the need for extra writing transistors. And, due, and also due to the low ion I of ratio of the MTG and the rerun, these two devices are actually working as a variable resistors, achieving a weak voltage swing during, in the circuit, while the Fairfield can achieve as high ion I of ratio as CMOS. Therefore, it is used as a switch, achieving the full voltage swing. It does not need it does not need uh, the extra writing devices. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. A little bit scattered, okay. but it still can hear you. Yeah, we will okay. let you know if we cannot hear you. Okay. And uh, the thirdly, um, due to the low off resistance of, M of MTG and VRAM, <laughs> these two devices will conduct constant static current during their operation, while the Fairfax can achieve a relatively high off resistance, fully cutting the path off. There is no need to worry about the constant static uh, power consumption. So in summary, the Fairfield can offer more benefits than the MCG and the rerun in building the non-volatile computing memory architectures, specifically the, uh, the CAM designs. And the next, I will, I will let you show, I will show how could we build uh, the Fairfield based CAM using uh, leveraging the Fairfield uh, properties. For the right scheme of the device, we just apply the <clears throat> <laughs> the positive or minus four volt in order to write a logic one and zero into the device respectively. And for the read voltage, for the read scheme, we apply the uh, a read pulse of one volt at the gate terminal of the device so that whether there is a current flowing through the device is dependent on both the value we store in the device and the gate voltage. And if we denote the, these two the, the value stored in the device and the gate voltage as an input, we actually from the truth table has achieving the device as a single transistor and gate. And if we place two Fairfield drain connected in parallel, we can actually achieve an ultra compact two Fairfield based TCAM design. <clears throat> Namely in this, in this design, 
um, the TAM design, the TCAM design consists of the two ferrofed working as both the comparison transistors as well as the storage element. The truth table of the two ferrofed have shown have, have validated that the match line, the match line voltage is the output of the XNOR functionality between the stored value and the search line the input. So therefore, these two ferrofed can achieve the search functionality uh, of the TCAM with an ultra compact area overhead. The simulation waveforms has also validated the functionality of our two ferrofed TCAM. And also the layer, the, the, layout, the layout has been sketched and estimated in, in terms of the cell size per bit and storage in order to, um, to show how, how compact we can achieve using the two ferrofed TCAM approach. We collected all the other uh, data points of other TCAM designs to, to, to showcase the advantages of our two ferrofed based TCAM designs. <clears throat> Here, the 16 CMOS represent, are represented by the two trends, which are NAND type and the NOR type match line connections, respectively. <clears throat> well, the trend of the 12 T NAND type is shown here. For the, for the non volatile memory based TCAM designs, uh, it's include, it's include the MDJ and the RERAM based TCAM cells. <clears throat> For our for the first Fairfax based TCAM designs we proposed in the 2016 is around 0 0.65 micro square. Well, for this ultra compact of two Fairfax TCAM designs, we can achieve uh, 0.15 uh, micrometer square. If we compare with a projected conventional CMOS TCAM design, we can achieve around 87% less area overhead cell size in terms of cell size compared with the CMOS. This ultra compact, compact area overhead can lead to the ultra less uh, parasitic capacitance when, when considering the array and application level uh, search energy and the performance uh, evaluation. <coughs> we, we plot the schematic TCAM array schematic include, including the TCAM core and input driver as well as the clock signal and the sense amplifier encoder so that we can compare, fit our TCAM designs <coughs> into the TCAM array and evaluate the array level against the, the, the first the 42 ferrofed TCAM designs, <coughs> the 16D CMOS TCAM and the 2T2R CMOS TCAM designs. <coughs> the benchmarking result at the array level of our two ferrofed TCAM have indicated that <coughs> due to the ultra compact area overhead, <coughs> The two favorite TCAM can achieve, in summary, resemble the, um, the 4.1 times better energy delay product than the 16T CMOS TCAM and the 2.8 times more uh, EDP than the 2T2R based TCAM cell. And this array level uh, advantages of the two favorite TCAM design can be further improved extend and extended towards the architecture and application level. <coughs> And of course, since the Fairfax device is a three terminal structure, <coughs> the right scheme is, is the voltage based and compared with the VRAM current based uh, uh, ride driven uh, mechanism, we can achieve more than 3000 times the ride energy compared with the VRAM based TCAM designs. <coughs> and uh, after, uh, by pushing the array level advantages towards the architecture and uh, algorithm level, we let's first take a look at the operations of our <coughs> current TCAM array. Only when one row, only when all cells within one row are exact matching with the search data, <coughs> then the array level will give you an output as P. And uh, due to the limited size of the TCAM array, such a block can only match with at most M queries. <clears throat> whatever whatever the application has the search data queries. So it is uh, most likely that uh, other kind of uh, queries are not uh, matching with all the stored vectors within the memory blocks. <clears throat> so in this case, we have to determine which is the closest uh, vector stored in the TCAM array to the query. For example, in this case, the first row has, uh, has the closest, has the closest uh, 
uh, distance uh, to the to the input query. When we look at the waveforms of the metroid, we can see as the number of mismatch bits decreases, <coughs> the match line discharge the, the match line voltage discharges to the ground with a different kind of um, different uh, speed discharging speed, leading to a different uh, discharging curve, as you see in the simulation waveform. However, it's very hard to detect uh, these kind of match line waveforms <coughs> in terms of different varying um, different mismatch degrees. By replacing the inverter-based sense amplifier with a self-referenced sense amplifier, we actually can transform the waveforms, the metron waveforms, towards the to the output of the sense amplifier <coughs> as with with a, with the curves as you, as shown in this figure. By probably by the proper timing strategies, we can actually easily detect the hammer distance between all the <coughs> between all the stored vectors. We, and uh, and uh, the input of query. So in this sense, we have actually achieved the, the exact, uh, achieved the approximate search functionality from the exact search function. And such approximate search functionality can be widely used in some advanced machine learning model based uh, hardware. Um, take the memory augmented neural network, uh, network architecture hardware for the virtual learning as an example. <clears throat> this such virtual learning infrastructure consisted consists of the feature extraction, the conventional memory to store the extract, extracted features, and the processing unit used to perform the cosine distance calculation between all the all the extracted feature and the new query. Every time when a new image is, comes into the architecture, it goes through the feature extraction layers <coughs> and. Uh, and the processing units in the GPU will perform the cosine distance between the new query with all the with all the extracted feature vectors in stored in the conventional memory, one by one sequentially. This sequential operation is time consuming, extremely time consuming and energy consuming. And then we propose to replace the last layer of the feature extraction neural networks by the local sensitive hashing function. Therefore, we can we can store the binary binary version of the extracted features embedding into the TCAM architectures. Every time when a new query coming into the into the uh, pro proposed architectures, <coughs> it goes through the feature extraction in binary and uh, search all the search this new query across the TCAM approximate approximate TCAM array in parallel. It will give it gives you the closest vectors compared with the search vector in hammer distance in uh, uh, <coughs> in the polynomial time. So in this case, the sequential ca calculation operation has been replaced with a parallel search functionality, therefore achieving a extremely improved energy consumption, uh, energy efficiency, and performance. The benchmarking result has also indicated the breakdowns. Of how we improve the the energy efficiency and the, and the performance of the system from the device, Fairfield device to the Fairfield based TCAM circuit and towards the GPU plus the Fairfield TCAM architecture, we can achieve uh, more than fifty eight energy uh, energy efficiency and uh, more than twenty five hundred performance improvement uh, when considering the benchmarking at the uh, virtual learning applications and this kind of and, and uh, this theory of work has been has been wrapped up and uh, accepted by our uh, by the Nature Electronics, and uh, this is uh, actually has showcased the <coughs> the integrated approach, the co-design and co-optimization approach uh, from the device level to the application level, and also we can further improve our uh, cam design functionality in another direction, considering the cam density and energy efficiency. The previous work have shown that by replacing the conventional CMOS with the emerging non-volatile memory, we can achieve a better cam density and uh, energy efficiency when we <coughs> when we build when we encode the logic into the non-volatile memories. And by transforming from the exact search functionality to the approximate search, we can further improve our energy efficiency and accommodate our cam array architectures in the in the machine learning or some uh, 
artificial intelligence type of applications. All these works are based on the digital cam search, where we store binary values into in the TCAM arrays and search all the, and our search data is also in the binary version. How about we further improve the cam density in other directions? How could we <laughs> elaborate a more more denser cam designs using our Fairfax devices. And that comes with a solution of uh, leveraging the multi-level or the analog characteristic of the uh, Fairfax to build a denser cam, denser cam design and architectures as well. <clears throat> and this comes with the, uh, with the concept of the analog and the multi-bit cam design. Uh, in, contrast, in contrast to the digital-based cam design, in the analog cam design, we can store actually we can actually store the continuous analog matching range <clears throat> within the cam cells, and we can take the analog value as the input of the search voltage, uh, as the search voltage. When the search voltage falls between the falls within the matching range of the cam cell, it will output a match signal. And if it falls, if the search voltage falls outside the matching range, <clears throat> it will in, it indicates a mismatch. Currently, there's uh, the rerun based uh, analog cam design has been proposed by the HD Lab and improving the memory density of the cam design. However, as you can see from the figure, <clears throat> the large area overhead of the rerun based analog cam design has sacrifices and compensates to improve the memory density. And also the high red energy of the rerun has not been addressed so far. We aim to propose a better analog cam design using the fair and by exploiting the analog, analog characteristic of the fair fat. Here we could see for our two fair fat TCAM design, <laughs> we just programmed the binary codes encode the binary values into our devices. But however, the Fairfax actually consisting of, uh, is consisted of uh, multiple uh, fair electric domains. So by applying different, uh, uh, different gate pulses with different amplitude or the right scale or the pulse width, we can actually achieve <coughs> the various uh, threshold voltage between the, uh, between the state zero and the state one. Therefore, achieving the analog <coughs> and the analog characteristic of the Fairfax, and by leveraging these various uh, threshold voltage of the devices, we can propo we propose the Faircam <coughs> with two Fair with two Fairfax and one inverter, um, performing the analog search functionality within this cam cell. <coughs> This such design can function as both the digital and the analog cam functionality. And here I showcase uh, one case of how we, uh, I elaborate how our proposed Ferrocam can function. First, we program the Ferrocam cell with the S and S bar state with uh, different uh, threshold voltage. Since we can program the states between the zero and ones, we are not limited to programming the zero and one case and, this, and the inverter, the, the, the analog inverter, the clock gated analog inverter is used to convert inverted the search line value to the search line bar so that they can, they can be complementary to each other. In this case, in this sense, the, fer, the ferrocam cell can actually store the two, uh, two threshold voltage of the ferro fed fer, and then form a matching ring as shown in this concept this schematic. <clears throat> For example, if the voltage range of our fair cam is one, zero to one volt, we can program we can program the range 0.4 volt to 0.7 volt by programming the 0.7 volt as the threshold voltage into the blue Fairfax device. And then we program the one minus 0.4 volt equals to 0.6 volt into the red device. So in this case, <coughs> we can uh, program the 0.4 volt to 0.7 matching range into the fair cam cell. Assume we have a search for the 0.6 volt. We first pre-charge the match line. <clears throat> and then since the 0.6 volt is smaller than the 0.7 volt, the blue device is turned off. And since the search line bar 
equal equals to the one volt minus 0.6 volt, which is 0.4 volt. It also less than the threshold voltage of the red device 0.6 volts. Therefore, the two paths from the match line to the ground has been turned off. The match line will stay high, will, will stay high, indicating a match, <coughs> a match condition of the ferro cam. And upon a search for the 0.2 volt, which is out, which is outside of the matching range, we could see the search line bar equals to one minus 0.2 volt, which is the 0.8 volt. In this case, the 0.8 volt is larger than the threshold voltage of the red device, turning the red device on. Therefore, the match line discharges from the match line to the ground, indicating a mismatch condition. The transcend, the transcend plot, the 3D transcend plot waveforms, <coughs> waveforms of the Falcon has been plotted in terms of the sense amplifier output and the time with different, uh, with, with the sweeping search line voltages. If we take a cross point, the figure of, at the time point 10, nan 10 nanoseconds, we can actually achieve a <coughs> matching range between the 0.4 volts to the point and the point, point 0.6 volts. And in this case, the transient simulation has validated our functionality in terms of different uh, analog matching range. And since we can independently program different uh, threshold voltage into the two devices, we can actually change the range of the, uh, we can change the lower and upper bounds of the matching range and therefore accommodate at most, uh, at least the eight, level, <coughs> eight discrete, discrete matching range into the voltage range. Therefore, we actually achieve a, at, at least a three-bit storage in, within one ferrocam cell. <clears throat> the scalability of the proposed ferrocam has been validated <clears throat> in terms of an increasing number of rows and increasing number of uh, columns. And since we can achieve a, at least a three-bit um, storage into the ferrocam cell, we can, we can expect it that the Farrakhan area overhead is much less than the digital, digital type of TCAM designs. Uh, for example, the, po the 0.05 uh, micrometer per, per bit. Therefore, the Farrakhan design can achieve more than uh, around 95.5% less area overhead compared with the CMOS. And furthermore, since we can achieve multiple as a storage in one cell, we can actually shrink our uh, I'll, I'll shrink the conventional conventional TCAM array when considering the application as the IP router. Here, uh, when we want to store when we want to store the IP addresses using the conventional CMOS TCAM, <clears throat> we employ 27 entries containing 24 cells per, per entry as the IP router. Using the Farrakhan, the proposed uh, proposed three bit Farrakhan cell. We can shrink the IP router's table into the 10 entries containing eight cells per entry. Therefore, we can achieve around 8.1 times the number of, uh, number of cam cells reduction. And further, we can, <coughs> we can evaluate that compared with the conventional CMOS TCAM array. We can achieve a narrow efficiency of um, 60 times and 23.1 20, times energy efficiency. And that how can we that, that how we leverage the analog characteristic of the Fairfax to build the efficient <coughs> cam designs. And here uh, I want to finally uh, conclude my um, conclude my work um, by exploiting the analog characteristic of the Fairfax. We can either achieve the ultra compact digital cam designs, or we can achieve the multi-bit efficient cam designs using the cross layer integrated approach. And namely, we, when we considering our design from the device circuit towards the architecture and application level, we can finally get the optimal energy efficiency and some enhanced uh, functionality, uh, enhanced from the exact search to the approximate or the analog search or from the single bit to the multi-bit search. In this case, we actually improve the overall energy and the performance, both at, uh, at different uh, design layers from the from the device towards the application level, and since uh, and since uh, as I as we have shown that the Fairfield can be leveraged uh, uh, either in the digital way or in the analog type, and also we have uh, we have demonstrated the fabricated 
or the experimental demonstration of our Fairfax based ferro cam design that can achieve a search and search or analog search operation. <laughs> the analog property of emerging devices together with the search circuit architecture and application innovations will offer the new opportunities for the domain specific application. And therefore, they can be really used and widely deployed in the big data and the Internet of Things, uh, Internet of Things applications. And that's, that's all for my work. And thank you very much for your listening. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yin, for the very nice presentation. So any questions?